Recording videos is hard, guys. Age of Empires 2, beginner Civ overview and tier list to learn the game. Not to win the game, not the best win rates for low elo, but to learn the game, to learn the core mechanics and the basic strategies and counters. This is completely personal opinion, and it's not what everyone's going to agree on, but I think some core values um, should be taken into consideration here from this tier list. Uh, let's begin from my experience from 1000 to 1500 rating. Um, I think you can easily get to 1500 if you practice some of these top sieves and play with them a lot and switch them up and switch the strategy. So let's go Aztecs. I haven't played Aztecs that much. Um, I maybe played a few games total, but it's a mezzo sieve and all three mezzo sieves are relatively similar when it comes to mechanics. Incas Immortal, a tower rushing. Aztecs, I guess, focus a little bit more on uh, eagles, and then Mayans are uh, popular for their archers, but also eagles as well. So Aztecs, I would put him... I'll probably put him B tier, because I don't think Mesosivs are the way to go for new players. You lack cavalry, you lack some other parts of the game. Let's, let's put it that way. So Mesosivs in general, I would never put in S tier. But uh, we'll see about the other ones. Berbers. Berbers are very flexible. Uh, good win rates overall. But they also get one-dimensional a little bit. They're Cav. Cav Civ, which kind of fits noobs in my opinion. Cav is the way to go for a lot of beginners. So I'll put in A tier just because they tend to lose. They, they get hard, hard countered by goths and similar so i wouldn't go further than than a tier with them but britons as an archery sieve with extra range on archers is uh, an s tier for sure they have a nice early game bonus they have a decent mid game late game i would say they're pretty noob friendly you have a, uh, an easy game plan with them you know what you have to make and you basically cannot go wrong with their archers coupled with some other units depending on what the opponent is doing. So Britain's easily S tier for beginners to learn the game, to learn the mechanics, to learn counters. Bulgarians, um, for new players, a straight up D, in my opinion. They don't have crossbows. They have some weird upgrades they have a crep post that these are very not necessarily cheesy strats to do with them but they're so unorth unorthodox that it makes it hard for uh new players to even understand what bulgarians are supposed to do and their timings hit hitting some critical quick timings with bulgarians i would not recommend them next up burmese burmese are okay uh, they have multiple options, but the most popular build is going into Castle and then into uh, Rambai, which is not a playstyle that I would recommend on Arabia. So we're, we're assuming that we're only talking about Arabia, guys. Um, we're talking noob, beginner, learn the game civs, not what the best civ is, okay? This is a tier list for, for new players. I would say Burmese C because I don't like going fast castle, build the castle, make one unit only. I don't think that teaches you the game. I'm not going to put it in D because they can play some other things. Byzantines, I would say they're a little bit too, too campy. Like a lot of people playing Byzantines just wall up and wait for the late game. And even in the late game, I wouldn't say Byzantines are the best. They, they, there's the sieves that beat them easily, so not the best play style for Byzantines um, in general. For new players when playing Byzantines, because they get let down this path, which is typically not the best way to go. I would maybe consider putting in B, because you do want to get the late game. When you're learning the game, late game is what you want to get to and then win. In order to learn it, in, in order to try out all the units. Um, Celts, very cheesy, 
very uh, aggressive, but then again, they can play late game, they can play um, C and, I mean, water maps. Let's put them in B. They can do certain things. Not, they're, they don't excel at new friendly stuff, but it's good to play Celts every once in a while just to understand how good the movement speed buff is in the early game, um, how good the, the better siege is, etc. Um, I would say they're, they're okay. Uh, Chinese, I would put Chinese maybe in even an S tier if it wasn't for the six villagers start which totally throws off new players. If you want to play Chinese, you need to play exclusively Chinese at the start to maximize that weird uh, eco bonus start with the six villagers at minus food and gold. Um, I would say their B tier, um, they can do anything, which is great. That's what you want. That's what uh, Berbers are good at. That's what, oh, what some other civs are good at. Cumans, D tier. Um, problem with humans is they're even worse when it comes to early game bonuses. <laughs> you get an extra TC in Feudal Age, which is the most confusing out of all or early game bonuses that you can get. Um, and they also don't really excel at anything but that. Like, they're okay at cav archers and cavalry, etc. But I wouldn't play them as a noob. That one of the last sips that I would like to play. Um, yeah, I probably agree with chat. I would put maybe I wouldn't put Chinese in D. I would put him in C, just because it's very unfriendly for for new players. But then again, they have a great tech tree that does fit. Uh, new players. We're looking for really good tech trees in this. Ethiopians. Um, the Ethiopians? They're a super strong civ. Very good early game. Um, great archers. Uh, you can you, you typically snowball with Ethiopian. What I don't like is that their eco bonus really pushes you far ahead in the early game sometimes where your standard builds don't align with the resources that you have because you get plus 100 food plus 100 gold if i remember um when you hit feudal age which might throw you you have to change your builds when you play ethiopians it's not something what you want to do they would probably be s tier because they have some really cool um unit compositions that you want to go for to uh practice that and ethiopians are so good at siege archer compositions okay um franks s tier next well franks are just they're too good first of all they're the best civ in the game in every mode at every skill level they're the best why great eco bonuses cheap castles uh best scouts in the game best cavalry in the game arguably um they're so good. A line of sight increase on the knights as well. You may not see it as something super important, but if you're a new player, any line of sight helps. So Franks are just S tier, no doubt about it. Now, Goths. I am a little bit biased when it comes to Goths because I played them a lot now. You may not think that they're good because they're very one dimensional, but you have to try a one-dimensional sieve to understand what they're bad at because you kind of have to play gods in order to figure out how to counter them. Whereas some other sieves, you know how to counter any type of tower rush. If you get tower rush, then you'll learn, you'll learn to counter. Uh, it doesn't matter what sieve it is. It doesn't matter that much. Whereas with gods, you really need to understand gods to know how to beat them and what counters them. And I guess the best way to do it is to play them a few times and, and lose some games. <laughs> and you'll realize how strong, how ridiculous Goths are once you get to like 30 minutes into the game and they're not dead. So even if you want to play them, Goths are the, one of the best sifts to try to learn how to play defensively and try to survive. Because they don't have a lot on, on their disposal in the early game, mid game. It's only late game where they shine. So I would say try them out, 
just to get a feel for surviving and winning uh, in Imperial Age. Huns, you know what? Huns are a great Civ, but you not building houses as a new player is a terrible thing. So I would put him in Beast. It's it's relatively similar to what's going on with Chinese. So I'll put him, I guess, B. They're a great Civ. Uh, really good bonuses, but not good for beginners. So we're talking only beginner Civs. What is good to learn the game? Not win, but learn the game. Incas of... I would say down here, B or C. And the reason being, it's a meso sieve. That means that they're lacking quite a few critical components. Second, Incas are very popular when it comes to tower rushes. I would not recommend going for tower rushes as a new player. That's not going to teach you anything. I would, I would even say C. So Incas... And, and their bonuses are, are a little bit uh, weird too. I would say avoid Incas as a new player. Indians, pretty much the same. They focus too hard on camels. I want to say they're the best. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe even B with Indians. Because they do have some cool late game options with the gunpowder gun and the bonuses and the Imperial camels. I would say B because you can get them to the late game and then try to try some tech switches and try to uh, play for Imperial in general. That is a good play style to learn the game. So I, I wouldn't put him in C just for, because of that. Italians though, uh, I would say C. They're a bit worse than Indians when it comes to that. They still play for some kind of quick Imperial and try to win, especially against... Cavalry, Italians are, yeah, they don't really shine. You typically die with them pretty early, I would say. Um, uh, uh, B, or both in C. Anyways, Italians and Indians, pretty similar. Probably both in C. Japanese, very solid sieve. They have everything. Uh, you have some uh, nice... Samurais, they can just own uh, unique units, not all of them, but the ones that they can get to. Cheaper age up. Garrett, I don't think necessarily cheaper age up is a, is a good thing for a Civ. Um, but Japanese, anyways, Japanese are pretty solid all around Civ. You'll learn things. Uh, you can play against anything. You'll learn in any age with Japanese because. Again, they're so flexible that you can play anything. Her, I put them in C, just because, first of all, they have that uh, bonus where you don't need buildings. You, you don't have requirements for age up. You just age up. You don't have to build a barracks to age up. Uh, you don't have to build uh, two buildings, two feudal age buildings to get to castle or something. And then the second one, which is even worse for new players, is that the farms do not need drop off, so you just you just get the food instantly as it's collected. It's not good for beginners. Uh, the commanders also have the ballista elephants, which are very hard to uh, mass up. And even if you mass them up, it's a hard unit to play. You need to understand the game really well. I would say stay away from Khmer if you can at the start. Koreans pretty much the same as Incas. They're good at they're they're like a mix between Incas and Burmese, where you can go Tower Rush or you can go Quick Castle into War Wagons. Not a good play style for new players. No, definitely not. Whereas Lithuanian, I would put him in A, but just because of that plus 150 food at the start, which throws you off, throws your builds off, you kind of want to play standard sieves. You want to play generic sieves. I would put him in, in B. Otherwise, if it wasn't for the food bonus, if it was some other bonus, I would put him in A. Uh, what I really like about Lithuanians, uh, why I would consider them also putting A or even higher, is that the sieve requires you to take relics from the map, which is a great mechanic to learn if you're a new player. You need the relics. It doesn't matter what sieve you are, you need the relics. But with Lithuanians, it's a must. It's a win condition. So, yeah, I, I guess I would put them in A just because of that relic. And 
I don't like that big eco bonus that they get that throws you off. Britons and Franks get an eco bonus, but it doesn't throw the bills off. This one, this one is so big that I would lower it down for new players. Yeah, this is a new player civ list. Yes, for, for noobs, for people that want to learn, to that want to get better at the game, not necessarily win their games playing these civs, but... Uh, yeah, my Neza, but the, the Brit bonus is just one villager difference, okay? This thing, I think, I feel like is is bigger. Because it opens up more possibilities, which you don't really need. Okay, my jars are kind of nice. They have great late game. I think they're one of the best sifts to learn the late game. Why? Because they have one of the best trash in the game. Um, and they also don't have any crazy bonuses, to, so they're quite generic overall. I will put them here. Not S tier necessarily, but um, A tier for sure. And... If you play Majas, you want to learn late game, get to late game, play the Trash Wars, if you can force that. Um, next up, Malay. Malay, they also have really good Trash because they get the no gold uh, Swordsman, but as a new player, I would veto the water maps. And Malay are really good at water. They don't really shine on non-water maps. And typically when you pick Malay, it's it's for water maps and then like decent late game and similar. But they're not, they don't excel at too many things other than having water and some nice buffs. So I would put them in C. Unless you want to play water maps, then they go up higher. But since you probably want to veto the water maps as a new player, I don't know. Okay, Malian's straight up S tier. One of the best hybrid sieves in the game. Great bonuses. No critical eco bonuses, just the wood discount. And um, you can play so many different strategies with Malians. And the bonus is they're also one of the top performers in every skill bracket, especially the top bracket. So Malians there. Um, now I was debating for Mayans, whether you want to have them in S tier or A tier. And I said, Mesosiv's probably not the best choice. But if you want to play a Mezzo Civ as a new player, I would go for Mayans. Mayans are one of the top performers in the game. They're currently, I think, second in win rate and a top tier. Um, I would put them in A just because I don't think you should play Mezzo Civs. But if you want one, pick Mayans, get some archers, get some Eagle Warriors, upgrade them, raid around, secure gold. That's the way to play Mayans. You always have to play it to your Civ's strengths and not go for some surprise strategies. Oh, uh, I don't know, I'm playing Franks, I need to go Archers. Sure, you can go Archers 1 in 10 games, but 9 out of 10 times, it's probably best they open standard scouts because they're, they're just so good. Um, okay, Mongols. I would say B. And all the Cav Archer Civs, I cannot give them S tier because Cav Archers... Let's be real, we noobs cannot control Cav Archers. We lose too many Cav Archers because we cannot handle the micro required for Cav Archers. Once you have Cav Archer army, you have to be controlling it all the time so you don't lose anything. Because if you start losing Cav Archers, it, it, they, just go, they just go to waste. They just wasted so much money in tech. Uh, they're, they're super expensive to upgrade because you need stable tech, you need blacksmith, you need range. It's a university, you need everything to fully upgrade it. The Mongols, they have a full eco bonus with uh, being able to hunt animals faster, which buffs your feudal age time, but I would say stay away from Mongols at the very start and try to learn them a little bit later as you get better at the game. Persians, I mean Persians. They're really not that great on Arabia. They're one of the worst sieves when it comes to win rate, which doesn't matter in our case. But uh, they're they're super hard on cavalry, but they, they lack certain things as well. I would put them around C or B, just because I don't feel like they're too good for beginners. There's some critical points in the tech tree, 
Um, they also have a very good late game with the, their crossbows not costing any gold, if I remember correctly. They don't have Arbalist. So it's a, it's a weird way to play. Um, Persians are definitely a cool sieve, just not the greatest at the start. Portuguese, the naval gunpowder, uh, Toria, not for beginners. Not for beginners, guys, especially not on Arabia. They're very tough to play. You need to be able to survive, and even if you do survive, you need to know exactly what you're supposed to do with them to win the game after you survive. And they're not necessarily the best save in the late game either. They have some uh, power spikes in the mid game. So I would not go for that too hard. Um, Saracens are next. Now Saracens don't have any eco bonuses at the start, but they do have a nice market bonus, uh, which lowers your fees. Uh, they're like a, 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 a an A or B, because they're a generic sieve, and because they have a lot of options. And, uh, hmm. I would say A with Saracen. You also get to destroy buildings faster, by default, with archers. So you can play archers with Saracens. That's nice. I would say A overall. Slavs. Now, Slavs are either A or S. What do you guys think? ARS for Slavs. They have super good late game. So you can go for Imperial Age um, wins with Slavs. Um, they have an open tech tree. They can do anything. They do focus on infantry later on, but they can definitely do anything. Hmm. Yeah, I would even say S tier with, with Slavs. They're, they're super good for new players. You, you even get a small bonus from the 10% farm increase, farm speed increase, even in the early game. Mongols are in B, man. Mongols are not the greatest for early game. Okay, Spanish, same thing as Burmese. I would say put them down here. A lot of C tier. Too focused on conquistador conquistadors. They're not good for new players. I don't think you're going to learn much from doing that. You're going to learn that one build that you can do on Arena and you can do here and there. But in a real game where you get attacked from, from Dark Age, Spanish, they have a nice light game. That's why they might be better than, than Burmese and than Koreans. But for new players, if you don't go uh, Fast Castle with them, yeah. Not that great. We're talking Arabia, new players, learning the game. Tatars, you see, Tatars are interesting. I would put them with Mongols because they are the, the same thing, same play style. Uh, maybe Tatars go for more archers in the beginning and Mongols go for more scouts or knights in the beginning, but they end up playing the same. You also get those sheep and uh, the hill bonus. They have a nice hill bonus that does force you to think about, okay, I have to play the hill bonus, I have to play the hill bonus. But guys, keep in mind, the hill bonus is huge with every sieve, so... Yeah, let's put, let's put the Tars in B. They're really nice. Um, but, Cav Archers, you don't have to go Cav Archers with it. With Mongols, you kind of do. With the Tars, you don't. But I would still believe in them in B. Um, Teut Teutonic, I mean, Teutons... Ah, Teutonic Knights. There's a reason why you never see them in pro games. Or almost never. Because they're so easy to counter. And what I would recommend is maybe to play a few in the games where you go to Teutonic Knights with Teutons. You go to Teutonic Knights and then you see how your opponent beats you with uh, beats your Teutonic Knights. They're, Teutonic Knights are, are like a nuke counter where uh, the beginners don't really have the APM or the knowledge to counter the Teutonic Knights, but later on Teutonic Knights are very situational and you don't even go for them with Teutons typically. Um, I would say 
they're good late game. They're okay late game. Not the best. I would say C. They don't have anything too special for beginners. I don't really like defensive sieves for beginners, except again, maybe gots. Um, as you can see, there's a pattern here. All these sieves that are very similar in playstyle are, are down on bottom. Okay, Turks are straight up D. Uh, one of the worst sieves to play as a beginner. Why? They don't have skirmisher, elite skirmishers. What else? Do they, they also are missing another unit that is critical. Um, it's just, it's, it's a terrible, oh wait, they, they don't have pikes. <laughs> pikes and elite skirmishers. Uh, two basic unit counters, they need to be able to even learn what counters what. I would say, um, just straight up D, straight up D tier. Vietnamese, I guess B, they don't really excel at anything. They don't have too much that I would point out what they're good or bad. So I would say solid, but nothing stands out. And then Vikings, super solid sieve. And this is not, as you can see, this is not necessarily a win rate stuff. Britons are always 50% win rate. Slavs as well, maybe even lower than 50%. Vikings are meta these days, but they're so good at everything that they do with their bonuses as well. Um, I would say these five you cannot go wrong with. They're super standard. Britons, archers, Franks with uh, cavalry, Malians with anything you want, Slavs with basically anything you want into infantry and siege. Vikings into uh, anything you want into berserkers and infantry and well they can do anything so these five sieves are the best Berbers are also great if you want to go heavy cavalry God's got God's great if you want to go infantry uh Lithuanians teach you how to take relics Majas teach you uh, late game trash wars Mayans are great if you want to try out a mezzo sieve and you don't know which one um now, there's different things to try out, but the bottom four I would definitely avoid. Maybe Portuguese don't have to be that low, but I, I'd still say the organ guns and the Fatoria is not something that the new players should try at all. Uh, Turks being absolute worst for new players, as well as Cumans with their early TC and Bulgarians with uh, really weird tech tree. And uh, buildings that uh, I would just avoid as a new player. You don't have to try all 35 civs at the start. You're going to see them against you. And especially in team games. In team games you can try anything you want. But I'm talking about 1v1, Arabia, new players. Try the, the basic things. Learn basic build orders. And then move on to these a little bit more weird, unique civs. But with the first five you cannot go wrong. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.